From NBC6, this is Today in South Florida. South Florida is hoping that hundreds of thousands of tourists will paint the town green this weekend. Three <laughs> major events on tap. One man and one woman shall be valid or recognized as a man. At the stroke of midnight, put hours of intense debate over gay marriage to bed. So what's the decision? And a National Guardsman is under arrest this morning, accused of trying to aid al-Qaeda. It is Friday, February the 13th, 2004. Good morning to you, a live and beautiful look at one of the cruise ships there in the port of Miami this morning. Not so foggy in Miami-Dade County, but boy, what a different story in Broward County this morning. A lot of problems with the fog. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you keep, the reason why we didn't show you a picture of a highway there is because you can't see so many of the highways yeah. right now. It's uh, one minute after 6 o'clock, 6.01. Bob Mayer and Pam Giganti, along with Lonnie Quinn. He kicks it off as he takes a look at the forecast for us. Hey, Lonnie. Hey, good morning to you too, Pam, and good morning, Bob, and good morning. Wave to everybody out there, guys. Hi, right, guys. All right. <laughs> what we do want to talk about, and I want to get right to it, is the fog. Take a look at this picture behind me. Pam showed you the port of Miami. It was looking crystal clear and beautiful. Well, inland, where temperatures are a little bit cooler and consequently closer to the dew point, you're getting fog and you're getting some thick fog. Let's pull up one of our neighborhood WeatherNet sites. This is the St. Agatha School in Sweetwater. Now, Sweetwater, temperature 66 degrees, dew point 65. I'm willing to bet you you're going to see some fog develop because we have not hit the coldest temperature of the day. So as that drops down right on top of it, if you get 65 degrees and a 65 degree dew point, no wind, which is what we're dealing with, you're gonna get the fog. Right now it is patchy, primarily inland Broward County. The sawgrass is a mess. We're gonna get to 83 degrees. The fog's gonna of course burn off. You should have a pretty decent day today. A slight little chance you might catch a little speck of a shower. Then I'm gonna to talk to you later about the weekend forecast because everybody wants to know about that long weekend, the whole thing. Karen Curtis, though, you're up. Hi there, down there. <laughs> we have foggy conditions, as Lonnie said, so please be careful out on the roadways. Not as bad here at Griffin Road and I-95, which is now if you're traveling between 595 and the Golden Glades, an 18-minute commute. But I'll tell you what, 595 is sucked in. Poor visibility there, as well as on I-75. In fact, I'll show you, that's 595. Into Miami-Dade on 95 southbound. Delays building, as you can see. That's now become a 15-minute commute from the Golden Glades into downtown. I will tell you, though, that construction off of 95 on the Julia Tuttle has been suspended. That's should make it a lot easier for you to get to the boat show and it shouldn't back up 95 as much. They're going to start it up again on the 23rd, but reconfigure it so it doesn't cause so much of a delay. Palmetto Expressway southbound now is up to a 13 minute ride. Not too bad there. Not quite as foggy. That's the latest traffic and weather together on the ones. Now your news. Thank you, Karen. From boats in the bay to art in the grove, there's a lot going on in South Florida this weekend. Tina Conti is live in Coconut Grove with the very latest. Good morning, Tina. Oh, good morning, Bob. A lot of workers are already starting to get out here to get ready for this weekend's Coconut Grove Arts Festival. They are doing things a little differently this year. You can get in for free here to the food and entertainment areas, but there's going to be an admission now to get into the artists area. A lot of big events this weekend, which are also expected to be good for local businesses as well. A great weekend for boat lovers and art lovers. Get ready to paint the town in Coconut Grove. Today, more than 300 artists from around the world will be setting up for this weekend's Coconut Grove Arts Festival, which starts Saturday. A crowd pleaser every year. Record-breaking crowd. I love boats. And South Florida's revving up for more action as the Yacht and Brokerage Show and the Miami International Boat Show both continue this weekend. The adrenaline just pumps. If you've never been over 100 miles an hour on water, it's just something you've never felt. Now we're just taking two and a half times what you feel in a car, and that's what you feel in a boat. Some local vendors tell us that the Miami Boat Show is vital to their livelihood. This man telling us that the show generates 60% of his annual sales. This show is for the boater. This show is everything you could think about for you, from engines to interiors to blinds like I make for yachts. And speaking of that boat show, it's going to be continuing on through next Tuesday. Admission is $15 for adults, 4 bucks for kids at the Miami Beach Convention Center. And, of course, here at the Coconut Grove Arts Festival. This is at the Bayside Village. That show starts tomorrow, runs through Monday. The $5 admission now to get into that artist area. And certainly, even if you're not planning to come out for these events, you might want to take note of the fact there will be a lot of traffic around this area over the weekend.
Should be a lot of fun. For now, reporting live in Coconut Grove, Tina Conti, NBC6. Thank you, Tina. Well, this morning, a fourth person is behind bars for the murder of a South Florida doctor and his son. Police arrested Ruben Fernandez in connection with the first-degree murder and armed burglary, which happened last July. Officers found Dr. Paul Jarrett and his son Greg shot to death inside their Coral Gables home. The first three arrests came earlier this month. This morning, Homeland Security wants to know how a woman got a loaded handgun on a Miami-bound plane. Investigators say the woman boarded the plane in the Turks and Caicos Islands, taking that gun right through security. Screeners were reportedly lax and not paying close attention to bags going through the x-ray machines. The woman says she realized during the flight that she had the weapon in her purse and told a flight attendant because she was afraid of being accused of sneaking it on board. The plane turned around. Police questioned the woman and have not filed any charges. In Massachusetts, after days of heated debate over gay marriage, lawmakers are going home without an answer. Lawmakers have decided to table the issue until next month. By midnight Calls last night, lawmakers opposed to the issue still hadn't mustered right. the votes to ban gay marriage, though they decided to adjourn after 12 hours of impassioned speeches. Kill list of amendment. Allow people to get married who love each other. Some say it is an issue that should go to the voters, but for now, gay marriage has survived and will be legal in Massachusetts beginning in mid-May. The Massachusetts legislature is scheduled to resume debate on March 11th. Meantime, the debate over gay marriage heating up across our country in a legal challenge to the state's law, city officials in San Francisco performed marriages for dozens of same-sex couples yesterday. And that's not all. Out in Des Moines, Iowa, a group gathered to protest, and it collected more than 10,000 signatures, hoping to block legislation that would allow same-sex marriages in that state. Developing news out of Qatar this morning, there are reports that a former Chechen president was seriously injured after his car was hit by an explosion. The former president was rumored to have ties to Osama bin Laden. In another development this morning, Another U.S. soldier is dead and two more injured after an explosion in a Baghdad suburb. Yesterday, two soldiers were killed in Baghdad. Also this morning, South Korea says it will send 3,000 troops to Iraq to help with reconstruction efforts. The force will include 1,600 engineering troops and 1,400 to provide security. The decision comes after months of debate and protests. In the meantime, U.S. governors returning from Iraq will brief President Bush today on the security situation and troop morale there. Comes as a National Guardsman sits behind bars this morning for trying to contact al-Qaeda. Brooke Hart has the latest. The accused guardsman is identified as 26-year-old specialist Ryan Anderson, seen here in his high school picture. Army officials say Anderson is under arrest at Fort Lewis, south of Seattle. Pending criminal charges of aiding the enemy, by wrongfully attempting to communicate and give intelligence to the al-Qaeda terrorist network in violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Officials say Anderson used internet chat rooms to try to contact al-Qaeda, offering, but they say not ultimately passing, information on military capabilities and weapons. Anderson converted to Islam over the last five years. One Muslim leader in the area knew him as Abdul Rashid on the internet as AKA gunfighter. He was asking people over the internet to come with him uh, into the mountains and learn how to shoot, do target practice. All of his messages were about gun training, and this was immediately offensive to the Muslim community. Anderson studied military history with a focus on the Middle East as a student at Washington State University. Anderson is part of the 81st Armor Brigade, set to leave for a year-long deployment in Iraq. The arrest was the result of a sting operation between the Army, the FBI, and the Department of Justice. Still unclear is why the Army was watching Anderson and his activity online. In Washington, Brooke Hart, NBC News. Just about nine minutes after six o'clock, the escalating violence in Haiti has Senator Bill Nelson teaming up with the Haitian American Grassroots Coalition today to urge President Bush to take notice of what's going on there. It comes as Haitian President Jean Bertrand Aristide speaks out for the first time since the uprisings. He says he is not, not stepping down. Yesterday, his troops took back the city of St. Mark from rebel troops who have taken several Haitian cities. Witnesses say Aristide loyalists set fire to homes, forcing many residents out. Fallout over the free trade protests in downtown Miami takes center stage at another meeting again today. An independent review panel holds the second of four public hearings designed to examine accusations of police misconduct during the November conference. The hearings address police training, use of force, prisoner processing, 
and the labor community's concerns. UM's top recruit, Willie Williams, may walk out of jail today, but that's only if a judge decides to grant him bond. The rising football star turned himself into police on Tuesday after a judge issued an arrest warrant for a probation violation. He faces a felony charge after investigators say he emptied three fire extinguishers at a Gainesville hotel. It is just the latest in a long history of arrests. Time coming up on 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. Traffic and weather on the ones. Here are your drive times on a very foggy Friday morning, the 13th. 18 minutes from 75 to 95 on I-595. And uh, 18 minutes from the GGI to downtown Miami on 95. 16 minutes sketches from the Palmetto to 95 on the Dolphin. As we said, it's a very foggy morning in South Florida. Not much rain. There's a slight chance of that later. Right now, your biggest danger and concern this morning is fog in western areas, especially in Broward County. We're going to have a high today in the mid-80s. It's going to be just like summer again. Phew. And still ahead right here on Today in South Florida. An elderly woman finds a new way to escape a nursing home, and you won't believe what she used for a getaway vehicle. This one you got to see to believe. South Florida, get ready to indulge your senses. The Coconut Grove Arts Festival is about to begin. And one of the featured artists is painting something very special right here in our studios this morning. Eric Waugh, we're going to talk to him all about it coming up in just a bit. See that canvas? Yes. In an hour, he's going to have a painting. It's just a blank there. canvas, though. You wait. There's nothing there. The man is talented. We'll be right back. In our rushed world, where pictures tell stories, who do you follow? Tonight at 11. Trust our experience. Feel our connection. Expect accuracy. As the pictures keep on changing, our commitment stays constant. NBC6. South Florida's news media. Doctors say the Egyptian twins separated at a Dallas hospital last October are doing so well, they might get to leave the hospital next month. Three-year-old Olds Ahmed and Mohammed Ibrahim were joined at the head, and they did not have complete skulls. Two more operations needed to fully reconstruct the heads, but those surgeries will not be as dangerous as the surgery that separated the two. This morning, a Texas woman is back, safe in a nursing home, after a very unusual escape. Apparently, the woman used an ambulance left running outside the building as her getaway vehicle. She then stopped at a police station to get directions from the dispatcher in the ambulance and headed out of town, lights roaring and siren on. The police eventually <laughs> caught up to her. The ambulance owner did not, did not press charges. Fourteen and a half minutes after six o'clock. Quick check of today's top stories for you. A big weekend for South Florida with three major events for thousands of tourists and locals alike. The 41st annual Coconut Grove Arts Festival starts tomorrow. Already underway, the 16th annual Yacht and Brokerage Show, plus the Miami International Boat Show on Miami Beach. A National Guardsman is under arrest right now. The military says Specialist Ryan Anderson tried to get in touch with al-Qaeda operatives over the Internet before shipping out to Iraq from Fort Lewis, Washington. As of 12.01 this morning, gay couples will be able to marry in Massachusetts come mid-May. State lawmakers have filed for a third time in three days to rewrite the Massachusetts Constitution to define marriage as exclusively between a man and a woman. The state Supreme Court had said gay couples are entitled to equal marriage rights. 6.15 is the time. The buzz is already building around one of the nation's premier art shows. The 41st annual Washington Mutual Coconut Grove Arts Festival begins this weekend. Some 750,000 people are expected to attend. And joining us this morning is one of the featured artists, a man known for giving live painting performances. Eric Waugh, nice right. to see you nice this morning. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's our pleasure. This is so cool. You have a blank canvas here. What That's is this, right. like a 30 by 40, right? 36 by 48. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's big. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. I was going to do a 30 by 40. I, th I thought a little energetic this morning. So. I love it. Yeah. So within an hour, we even have less than an hour for our show this morning. You're actually yeah. going to paint an entire portrait, correct? I'm going to do the best I can. How did you yeah. get into this whole live painting performance thing? This is pretty unique. Yeah. Well, actually, I've been you know, painting in my studio over 20,000 paintings I've done over 15 years. Wow. And I wanted to get out of my studio and actually meet the people, you know, who are purchase, purchasing my work and, and the people who enjoy my work. And uh, I just thought it'd be 
just be you know a great thing to do you know get out and yeah. meet the people now can so. you start while we talk or is that going to confuse you yeah do you need no your problem alone time no problem. okay you want to go ahead and start let we'll me start chatting now? yeah yeah do you actually, have an idea in your head already of what you're uh, going to do a little bit i'm going to be doing a musical theme because i'm going to be down at the coconut grove right. uh, painting two music over saturday sunday and monday oh okay yeah. so um inspired by music i was going to say was, sort of your muse a little yeah, bit yeah i was going to be a musician you ah. know be the rock star thing and that that didn't quite work out so at, at 20 i picked up a paintbrush <laughs> instead of a guitar and here I am. And you're making money yeah. doing this, which is so great, yeah. and also giving a lot back to charity, which is wonderful. Yeah, that's right. I've actually uh, created the world's largest painting for charity, a 41,400 wow. square foot work of art. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. Wow. Yeah, and that was for Camp Heartland, a summer camp for children Excellent. affected by HIV and AIDS and the Starlight Children's Foundation. Well, that's wonderful yeah. to hear. Go ahead and start. All right. And we do want to tell everybody that the painting that you are going to make for us right now today is actually going to charity. It's going to be used for scholar art scholarships. That's right. Yeah, over the Sponsored three days the of the show, we're, we're going to be selling off raffle tickets. Okay. And uh, at the end of the festival, we'll make the draw oh, okay. and someone will get a chance to... Uh, to win this piece. Neat. Yeah. Do they go to your booth to get those raffle tickets? Is that how it works? Uh, at my booth. Okay. As well as I believe they're going to be selling them around the show. Okay. People will be walking around Excellent. and selling them as well. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and start. Let's okay. see. And I don't know if the camera can actually catch some of the other paintings that have been here on the side, but some of these are the ones that you've done within an hour as well. It's just tremendous. All right. So Eric Wa, a live painting performance for us this morning. All throughout the show this morning on Today in South Florida, we're going to check back with Eric and see how he's doing. But uh, so far, so good. And it's going to be a full painting once again. It's going to be auctioned off throughout the show. It is going to go to charity. The Washington Mutual Coconut Grove Arts Festival takes place all weekend long in the heart of the Grove, being held on McFarland Road, South Bayshore Drive, and Pan American Drive. There will be a $5 admission to the artist area this time around, and that's for all the serious art buyers. For more information, log on to our website, NBC6.net. And, of course, we'll be checking in with Eric throughout the show. NBC6, of course, a proud sponsor of the Coconut Grove Arts Festival. It's your money on NBC6. 19 minutes after 6 o'clock, the Super Bowl isn't the only annual event that draws major advertisers. This year, a 30-second spot during the Oscar telecast is going for a record $1.5 million. That surpasses last year's asking price of $1.4 million. The Academy Awards presentation has ranked as one of the most watched entertainment shows in history. Yeah, what do we got here? It's uh, just about 20 minutes after... What page are we on, guys? Give me a, give me a, there's a later, there's a lady, a lady who's spraying her legs with, uh, I guess it's not insect repellent. Maybe it's that self-tanning stuff, Bob, that's become all the rage now. You know, they say it's not good for you to go out into the sun because of the UV rays. So there are a lot of companies now that are making money on these uh, spray, spray cans of, uh, They're painting themselves, basically. Of tanning stuff. That's what it is. It's like a dye. And of course, uh, this is kind of an ironic story because the cancer drug that's at the back of, uh, of the Martha Stewart scandal, which uh, has, has now gotten FDA approval. Imclone's drug, Erbitux, is supposed to shrink tumors by attacking molecules in advanced colon cancer cells. But the drug's notoriety stems more from its connection to Martha Stewart. Lawyers in the Martha Stewart case are expected to rest next week. A look at the Dow looks not bad, not great. The Dow lost 43 in a fraction to close at 10,693. And the NASDAQ lost 16 points to close at 2,073. That's a look at morning business. Good morning. I'm Karen Curtis, live in the traffic center. You can barely see 595 here. It is so foggy, and now major problems out on Alligator Alley. We have a uh, tanker truck on fire and is shutting down the alley at mile marker 31. So you want to avoid that and take uh, the uh, Tamiami Trail or the Southern Boulevard route to the other side of the uh, state if you are heading that way. The tanker truck on fire, mile, mile marker 31, Alligator Alley. Meanwhile, 18 minutes for you, 595 between 75 and 95. 95 south Southbound, foggy, but not as bad, and that's now up to a 20-minute ride. Golden Glades in a downtown. Palmetto Expressway starting to heat up as well. 15 minutes between 75 and the Dolphin. Now to Lonnie and the weather. 
All right, good enough, Karen. Well, hey, look, here's the deal right now. It's 64 degrees outside. There's isolated fog. It's thick at times. It's primarily in Broward County, but it's possibly developing all throughout South Florida. But it is just patchy, but it's thick, like we said. So, Bob, you told me a word you wanted me to use today. What was that word, Bob? Well, well it was definitely soupy. Soupy, soupy out there. Bob, we're going to go soupy. And sure enough, you drove through it. It is soupy out there. The other word, or the other phrase I want to go with, this fog will be burning off. And then you're going to end up with a day, really, where you're not going to be wanting too much more than what you get. Wanting no more, I'm going to go with 83 soupy. degrees, sun and cloud mix. Maybe a couple of slight little showers. So soupy, wanting no more. Just eating the appetizer. No, I went with wanting soup. I don't oh, get that. Yeah. I like Very the Very close cousin to wonton soup. Oh, uh. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk thank about it. Thank you, Lonnie. So, what's that? Thank oh. you, Lonnie. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Temperatures outside right now, 65. Mikasuki, 66, Fort Lauderdale, 65, Miami. There's your hot spot in the entire country right now. It's in Key West, 70 degrees. So let's pull up First Alert Doppler 6, if you don't mind. First Alert Doppler 6, First Alert Doppler 6. Looking just like this, pretty quiet picture. We're not dealing with too, too much rain. I'll show you where the rain is, though, to the maps we go. It's up to our north. This is what we're looking for right here. That front will be impacting us, just not today. Today, the setup is the front has stalled to the north of Okeechobee. That's where the most of the rain and the shower activity will remain. We get the sun, the cloud mix, warm and humid, much like we saw yesterday, just a slight little shower chance. But by the weekend, what happens? Look here, see if you can see the trough. Watch this trough developing around the Rocky Mountain states. That is gonna start, the trough itself starts to move southeast. As it does so, it's gonna exert pressure right there on this thing going to push it into our area. It's not going to be a washout, but we're going to get a couple of showers out of it. For today, though, a slight chance for a shower. More sun and clouds up at 83 degrees. The winds blow. They're variable right now. They'll start blowing out of the east lightly, 5 to 10 knots. And there's your six-day forecast. A couple of showers on Valentine's Day, your best chance Sunday. Enjoy the holiday weekend, gang. We're back after this. This closed captioning segment is brought to you by Palmetto Ford. Thinking work truck? Give Palmetto Ford a try before you buy. 305-592-FORD. If you keep your pedal to the metal and always gamble on the ember, you may soon get caught on camera. Before you have to pay, find out who may be putting the brakes on red light runners. Tonight at 11 on NBC6. Next, all new Ellen. Celebrate Valentine's Day with Ted Danson and Mary Steenburgen. I feel the love. Plus the Sopranos, Edie Falco. And Ellen's getting down with Casey and the Sunshine Band. Ellen. Today at 4 on NBC6. I didn't like what she was doing, and it was repulsive to me. But worse was the way you took it. Please. please I have no talk. choice, and I have to say that you're fired. Despite Brutal. pleading with the Donald, really pleading with him, it did her no good. This week's victim, Jesse, so the latest person you to hear the dreaded to the words, you're fired. Down to the street. And we'll hear what she has to say later this morning. Right down to the street she goes. The Today Show will have a special on this, and we'll be talking they with They go into the Jessie. boardroom with their bags packed That's in right. case they're kicked out. We'll be right back. Only on today. What really goes on inside this house? These women know. Laura Bush, Hillary Clinton, Nancy Reagan, Rosalind Carter, Betty Ford. Talk candidly about their husbands, their home, their country. America's first ladies. Next week on today. On the next Rick Sanchez show. Guess who's here? Top skaters Oksana Bayul and Paul Wiley talking about Olympic gold. And we learn the secrets that strippers know about staying thin. Also a preview of a new romantic movie for Valentine's Day. Yeah. From NBC6, this is Today in South Florida. From boats to painting, there is a little something for everybody this weekend in South Florida. That's right, a lot of big events going on here this weekend. I'm Tina Conti, live in Coconut Grove. We're going to tell you all about what the fun's going to be like and also why it's good for local business. New billboards are going up to help police catch a serial rapist. A foul problem for one South Florida city. The chicken catcher has been called in. <laughs> it is Friday, February the 13th, 2004. Good morning. A live look from our camera in Coconut Grove at downtown Miami. You can see it's a bit foggy out there in Miami-Dade County. Worse, however, in Broward. So as you get going and get on the roads this morning, do be careful. I'm Pam Giganti. I'm Bob Mayer. It is Friday the 13th today. Ooh. It is also one minute exactly after 6.30. Right, so it's 6.31. It's 6.31. Right.
Very good. <laughs> you love that, it when it happens, Bob, right on the nose. On the you? nose. I love that. Well, you know what we're dealing with? You, of course, know what we're dealing with because we've been talking about it all morning. Fog. Bog, the fog is out there. Okay, right behind me, you see a live picture of our Mikasuki camera. What a yucky mess out there. It's very isolated, the fog, but when you hit it, trust me, you almost have to stop in your tracks because it's really thick and very tough to drive through. Now, let's take a look at some temperatures outside. If we go back to our maps here, look at this. Why are we getting fog like around Miccosukee, maybe like around the sawgrass inland areas? Because it's a little bit cooler. It's 64 degrees in Miccosukee, 65 Miami. The cooler temperatures are closer to the dew point. Thus, we get the fog. Your forecast shapes up like this. Patchy fog right now, inland areas. We will get up to 83. That fog is going to be leaving us. And then it'll be a sun and cloud mix, just a slight chance for a shower, a day very similar to what we saw yesterday. Now, coming up, I'll give you my extended forecast. You want to know about the holiday weekend, right? I got that for you right now. Karen, catch. Yeah. Lana, oh. I dropped it. Lonnie, <laughs> your fog, your weather is interfering with my traffic. This is now I-95 at 79th. You could see this perfectly moments ago, and this just bank of fog moved in. You can barely see the roadway from our camera at 79th Street southbound. So make sure you have your low beams on or your fog lights if you do have them. Southbound now has gone to a 20-minute ride from the Golden Glades into downtown. Also, the construction of the Julia Tuttle has been removed and will be resumed on the 23rd, but it should ease up the delays as it, that were associated with that. Palmetto backs up now stops on the approach to 103 altogether, though 18-minute ride from 75 down to the Dolphin Expressway. And then now 595 has opened up. You couldn't see that about a half hour ago, so that's the good news there. 18 minutes from 75 to 95. That's your traffic and weather together on the ones. Now your news. Thank you, Karen. It is shaping up to be a busy weekend here in South Florida with two boat shows going on and, of course, the Coconut Grove Arts Festival. Thousands will be converging on South Florida in search of something to do over this Valentine's Day weekend. Tina Conti's live for us from the Grove with more on the festivities there. Tina. All kinds of fun going on this weekend, Pam. We're starting to see more and more activity here where they're setting up for this weekend's Coconut Grove Arts Festival. Here's my favorite part of it. We've got the big food vendors court here. You can get in for free to the food and entertainment areas, but this year you will have to pay an admission fee to get in to see the artist show. Between this and those big boat shows, a lot of businesses say this is going to be a great weekend for them. A great weekend for boat lovers and art lovers. Get ready to paint the town in Coconut Grove. Today, more than 300 artists from around the world will be setting up for this weekend's Coconut Grove Arts Festival, which starts Saturday. A crowd pleaser every year. Record-breaking crowd. I love the boat. And South Florida's revving up for more action as the Yacht and Brokerage Show and the Miami International Boat Show both continue this weekend. The adrenaline just pumps. If you've never been over 100 miles an hour on water, it's just something you've never felt. Now we're just taking two and a half times what you feel in a car, and that's what you feel in a boat. Some local vendors tell us that the Miami Boat Show is vital to their livelihood. This man telling us that the show generates 60% of his annual sales. This show is for the boater. This show is everything you could think about for you, from engines to interiors to blinds like I make for yachts. And if you're interested in coming out, here's the info for you. First of all, the Miami International Boat Show runs through next Tuesday at the Miami Beach Convention Center in the Sea Line Marina. Admission $15 for adults, $4 for kids. And here at the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, we're at Bayside Village in the Grove. That runs through from the 14th through the 16th there. And again, it is going to cost you $5 to get into that artist's area. You can log on to NBC6.net for more information. And here at the Arts Festival, they are expecting tens of thousands of people to come out for this. Keep in mind, if you're heading through this area, even just near this area, you certainly may run into some traffic over the weekend. We are reporting live in Coconut Grove. Tina Coffey, NBC6. Tina, thank you. Miami-Dade police are on the hunt for a rapist in North Miami-Dade, and they're hoping a reenactment of the crime will help catch this man. Police say he has attacked at least four women. Now, it happened back in the early morning hours of January the 18th. Police say the suspect pushed a woman who was pumping gas at a Chevron station along Northwest 167th Street into her car, took her to another location, and then assaulted her for three hours. If you have any information, please call Crime Stop at 305-471-TIPS. In the meantime, in their efforts to nab a different rapist, authorities are placing billboards across the county. 45 billboards will display a sketch of the North Dade serial rapist along with information on how to contact authorities. Police hope somebody will lead them to the perpetrator. Police say the suspect has raped at least seven women over the past year in the Northwest Miami-Dade area.
6.36 the time, a German man who emailed death threats to President Bush won't be serving any time in jail, but will have to leave the country. An immigration judge decided that Volker Chesowanski had engaged in terrorist activities and ordered him deported at once. Police arrested the man last August after he used a Broward County library computer to send an email to the FBI that said he would kill President Bush. The family of a Disney worker who died in a character parade is blaming the Magic Kingdom for his death. I want my son, my beautiful son. He never come back. That's why I wanted my son, my son. Park officials say 38-year-old Javier Cruz, costumed as Pluto, somehow got his right foot caught between two sections of a float. He then fell down and the float ran him over. Disney workers used a forklift and a hydraulic lift to get the float off of Cruz. A Disney spokesperson says she can't comment on the specifics because the accident is still under investigation. The Florida Supreme Court says the cutting of healthy citrus trees can continue. The court upholding a law that allows the state to chop down trees not infected with canker in order to protect commercial groves. Canker is the bacteria that could threaten Florida's $9 billion citrus industry if it spreads. Under the law, the State Department of Agriculture can destroy all citrus trees within 1,900 feet of any canker-infected tree. 637 now. There's still another hearing expected in the Michael Jackson case. Just don't expect it to be too exciting. More than six years after her death, there is new information, and it's on tape about the life of Princess Diana. And we're checking in live right now with artist Eric Waugh to see how he's doing with his painting. He is expected to finish it by the end of our show this morning, and then during the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, it will be auctioned off for an art scholarship. You go, Eric. We'll be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Care Access. Finally, a licensed health plan from $55 per month. Call 877-411-CAHP. Harlem Boys Choir kicked off its world tour in Miami. During the tour, the group will pay homage, homage to Black History Month by performing a collection of African-American spiritual songs. And the Harlem Boys Choir will be our special guest tonight on Friday's Live. And that's not all. Tonight on Friday's Live, we'll get the romance flowing with a food Ooh. and champagne expert from Escapazo, a pastry chef from the Biltmore Hotel. And <laughs> Pistols and Petals brings an alternative to roses for someone special. That all starts tonight at 5. And let's pay homage, if you will, to uh, homage. homage. <laughs> Oh, what time know. is it, fam? It is 641. Traffic and weather on the ones. 25 minutes your drive time along I-95 from the Golden Glades into downtown. 20 minutes along the Dolphin from the Palmetto to I-95. And 20 minutes from 595 to Glades on I-95. As you can see from those pictures, it is foggy outside, patchy fog around some areas this morning, so do be careful on the roads. Slight chance of some showers this afternoon, but a high of 83 degrees. 18 minutes before 7 o'clock. And we'll be right back. Stay close. Sunday at 7, 6 Central, it's the premiere of Shrek on NBC. You were expecting Prince Charming. With Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, and Eddie Murphy. I'm a donkey on air! Plus, a never-before-seen Shrek 2 preview. Wow. Then, American Dreams is back. A daughter Meg, leaves home. Meg's gone. And Meg, special Meg, guest star Nick Lachey as Tom Jones. Oh, the premiere of Shrek, all new American Dreams, followed by an all new Law and Order criminal intent, NBC Sunday. In our rushed world, where pictures tell stories, who do you follow? Tonight at 11. Trust our experience. Feel our connection. Expect accuracy. As the pictures keep on changing, our commitment stays constant. NBC6. South Florida's News Media. 645 on the nose. Here's a quick check of your top stories today in South Florida. A big weekend for South Florida with three major events for hundreds of thousands of tourists and locals alike. The 41st annual Coconut Grove Arts Festival begins tomorrow. Already underway, the 16th annual Yacht and Brokerage Show, plus the Miami International Boat Show on Miami Beach. A National Guardsman is under arrest right now. The military says Specialist Ryan Anderson tried to get in touch with al-Qaeda operatives over the Internet before shipping out to Iraq from Fort Lewis, Washington.
As of 12.01 a.m., gay couples will be able to marry in Massachusetts in come mid-May. State lawmakers have failed for a third time in three days to rewrite the Massachusetts Constitution to define marriage as exclusively between a man and a woman. The state Supreme Court has said gay couples are entitled to equal marriage rights. New postcards are coming back from Mars. Scientists say the Spirit rover has begun making some of its own driving decisions while exploring the red planet. Opportunity is also on the move, looking for evidence that life once existed on the Martian surface. <laughs> NBC is getting ready to air You're audio on. and videotapes secretly recorded by Princess Diana, actually for the first time ever. The tapes were made during interviews for Andrew Morton's 1992 international bestseller, Diana, Her True Story. According to NBC, Diana talks about becoming royalty, her struggle with an eating disorder, her strained relationship with Prince Charles, and her suicide attempts. The network plans to air the two-hour documentary, Princess Diana, The Secret Tapes, on March 14th, make that March 4th, and March 11th. The Michael Jackson child molestation case heads back to court today, but don't expect any of the excitement surrounding the last hearing. Jackson won't be there, and neither will the fans or the media horde that camped outside the Santa Maria courthouse last month. Today, a judge will be setting a date for the next hearing and listening to arguments on unsealing documents in the case. There's new security concerns. There are new security concerns for Microsoft. Officials say that parts of its Windows source code have been leaked over the Internet. The source code is the blueprint for the Microsoft operating system. Company officials are worried that hackers who obtain the code could have access to your PC and attack machines running through a Windows program. However, there is a patch. You can download it. How many chickens could a chicken catcher chack catch if a chicken catcher could cha catch ch I couldn't do it. Could catch chickens. All right. Well, with the poultry population in Key West out of control, residents have now appointed a chicken catcher. Hank Tester has more. The Key West chickens, the Conch Republic's best tourist draw since Jimmy Buffett. Folks flock to see them. It's unique, though. I mean, where do you, where do you see these kind of things? Uh, uh, except on a farm, you know. 2,000 or more said to roam the downtown area. Not always the best citizens. You know, people are concerned about chicken droppings. They're concerned about this. And uh, if, if you live near where there are roosters crowing on that and they keep you awake, it can become an issue. Thus the controversy and birth of a self-generating publicity machine. This Key West chicken phenomenon is totally out of control. Uh, half of the town would like to get rid of them all, and the other, the other half don't want to get rid of any of them. So no one is going to be satisfied. The city hopes to ship out about a thousand birds to a ranch near Miramar, Florida. They've hired a chicken catcher who's now fed up with the international publicity. Rumors unfounded that he can't catch any chickens. And the problem with Key West is that a lot of people are feeding these chickens, so they're not hungry. And they're wild, so it's, uh, it's not easy being me. But the chicken controversy has put Key West into the headlines. Priceless. Uh, it's just really amazing that uh, chickens could uh, uh, grab the headlines the way they, the way they have. <laughs> And chicken's not bad for business. The once quaint one-room chicken store is now a two-building operation on Duval Street. I like to think that the chickens of Key West are, are the soul of old Key West. And uh, it's a party. The chickens have become media darlings. Are the, yeah, but look, the it gets walking? you out of Dade County today. <laughs> What is better than a chicken story in Key West in the middle of the winter time? And the tourism promoters in this town, they're laughing all the way to the hen house. Reporting from Duval Street, Key West, Hank Tester, NBC6. Thank you, Hank. Well, we're crowing here about Eric Wall all morning long. He's been painting a picture right here in our studio, and now it's finally time to reveal a good portion of the portrait. Eric, you're almost done. Almost there. This yeah. is definitely Miami-inspired. I love the bongo drums, and yeah. is that where you got your idea from that oh, you're here absolutely. in South Florida? I had to come down here a couple of days earlier <laughs> just to get inspired a bit. So. This is yeah. so beautiful. So it looks like it's Thank on you. the beach. You got the water, the palm trees, the exactly. bongo drums.
Yep, just trying to get a flavor, you know, of, of coconut grove. Excellent. Got some coconuts in there. Now, how much yeah. would a painting like this go for retail if you were selling uh, it? Retail probably around 3000 something wow. like that. Wow, yep. 3000 bucks. We want yeah. to remind everybody that this is going to actually go for a scholarship sponsored by the Coconut Grove Arts Festival. And the That's way right. is just go down to the festival over the weekend yep. and buy a raffle ticket. That's or right. 500 raffle tickets or how many exactly. ever you want, right? Yep. It all goes to a great cause. All, yeah. Even the money, all the money from the raffle and everything goes. Yeah. Wonderful. Every buck. Yeah. This is so beautiful. Thank we you. thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you very much. It's really been a lot it's of fun. It's got another 10 minutes and I should be done. Okay, yeah. perfect. Go to the festival and see the final product. That's right. Let's turn things over to Karen Curtis and take a look at traffic and weather on the ones, Miss Karen. You got it. It's actually 651 exactly at this hour, and the fog is the big story there. Boy, I could see the roadway just moments ago, and now you cannot. That is 95 at Griffin Road. You can see some headlights coming at you, but man, it is very, very foggy out there. Also have a gas tanker on fire. This is out in Alligator Alley. Westbound lanes blocked at mile marker 31. Driver got out okay, but this is a problem if you're heading to the West Coast. Go ahead and take Tamami Trail or State Road 80 in Palm Beach County to get over there. This is a 20-minute ride from 595 to the Golden Glades Interchange in Miami-Dade. Also, as you're traveling on 95 southbound, take a look at that. You can't see anything at all. And that just began. It just rolled in over 95. As you're heading in uh, southbound, that's now a 25-minute ride from Golden Glades into downtown. And then 595, 25 minutes as well from 75 to 95. Put on those low beams. And also now, bad accident shutting down Chrome Avenue. This one at Southwest 136th Street. Take the turnpike as your alternate. That's your traffic on the ones. Now Lonnie's got more on this wicked weather. You got it. Wicked is right. Foggy is the word for our morning. Right now about 64 degrees outside. We get up to 83, maybe a slight chance for a shower more so i think a sun and cloud mix as that fog will be leaving us temperature 65 miami chilly spot miccosukee inland as the temperatures are cooler inland that's where we're seeing the fog what about rainfall let me show you what's going on here we're not doing too bad here in south florida so that's pretty good right up to our north, that's where this front remains with all the heavier activity. The front will not affect us today because it has stalled. Just to the north of Okeechobee, we're going to get the sun and cloud mix. The showers stay up to our north. We're warm, we're humid. Just a slight shower chance, like you saw yesterday, right? And probably not a lot of complaints about the day that we had yesterday. Now, by the weekend, a uh, trough digging its way into the Rocky Mountain states will start to exert pressure on this front. It's going to push it into our area, so an increased chance for showers come the weekend. I'll show you that in just a sec. Right now, I told you 66, Miami International. Look at this behind me, right there. Hollywood, Hollywood, California, all the big stars out there. It's 56 degrees in Hollywood. And of course, you know, the big stars, you always read about the breakups. It's the quintessential clip of the day. There's another Hollywood breakup, I have to report. This is from New York City. The, those two are not breaking up. They're making the announcement. And the announcement, guys, Bob Pam, about the couple behind them. After 43 years, Ken and Barbie are splitting I'm up. I'm stunned. It's very true. This is how Barbie made her debut 43 years ago. You know, she has worked hard. There's Ken, looks like a football coach. But uh, Barbie's worked hard to maintain that unattainable figure. And, yeah, uh, and done, she's done a fine job. Done a heck of, of a job. A heck of a, but I think Barbie's the one behind the breakup. Look, clearly she's the one blowing yeah, Ken off. Yeah, she's saying goodbye to Ken. Did yeah. she, get, she got the car, obviously. And, <laughs> yes, she got the, uh, what, the Barbie beach mobile, whatever that is. Okay. Yeah, she got the house, the plane, hey, the car. She got everything. I got to tell you, for, for my niece, Caitlin, who's listening right now, Caitlin, that's a true story. It comes from the International Toy Fair. The announcement was made yesterday uh, in New York City. Did they give a reason? Sometimes, Bob, women just, you know how it works. <laughs> Irreconcilable differences. 83 degrees today, slight chance for a shower. Winds are variable. They'll then become out of the east around 5 to 10 knots. Good day for the boaters, I guess. And Valentine's Day, a slight chance for showers. Best chance Saturday night into Sunday. We're back after this. First Alert Doppler 6 is brought to you exclusively by the Miccosukee Tribe of Indians of Florida. If you keep your pedal to the metal and always gamble on the amp. You may soon get caught on camera. Before you have to pay, find out who may be putting the brakes on Red Light Runners. Tonight at 11 on NBC6. The NBC6 Fishing Report with Captain Rick Murphy is brought to you by Yamaha, the world's first V6 four-stroke outboard, providing clean, quiet, smooth running operation when you want the best Yamaha. Hi, I'm Captain Rick Murphy, the host of Sportsman's Adventures, and this week the Miami Boat Show comes to town, so this is a great opportunity for you to go and look at all the makes and models. Inshore boats, offshore boats, mega yachts, bay boats, they're all there under one roof. Now you need to consider what's going to best fit your family and your needs. The other thing that you need to know is that you need to make sure that you take that boat for a test ride. You wouldn't take your car or buy a car without taking it for a test ride. Now try to take that boat for a ride on a day when it's blowing 15 to 20 knots. It's going to give you a great idea how wet the boat is and how well it rides. 
Remember, the Miami Boat Show this week. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, tight lines and good fishing. The NBC6 Fishing Report with Captain Rick Murphy has been brought to you by Yamaha. Yamaha, expect a lot more. NBC6 invites you to the Washington Mutual Coconut Grove Arts Festival, February 14th through the 16th. Admission to the Visual Arts Area, just $5 per person or free with your Metrorail Golden Passport. Learn more at NBC6.net. Proudly supported by El Dorado Furniture. That is going to do it for us. We thank you so much for making NBC6 your choice. And we want to leave you right now with uh, the painting that artist Eric Waugh has been doing for us over the last hour. No, it's it really is cool. spectacular. It's really cool. They're going to auction it off or actually raffle it off at the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, all for an art scholarship. Eric, it's beautiful. Thank you for making NBC6 your choice for news. Join Tony Segreto and Jackie Nesbrough for NBC6 News at 5. And for news 24 hours a day, log on to NBC6.net or listen to us on 87.7 FM. First Alert Doppler 6 is brought to you by the Miccosukee Tribe of Indians of Florida.